Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving another geometry puzzle. Two semicircles with radii 3 and 2 and a circle with radius r are inscribed in a 4x10 rectangle as shown, find r. So we're going to be finding the radius of the circle. So at this point you can go ahead and try the problem yourself first before you watch the solution. Okay, let's get started. So, suppose these are the centers. Let's go ahead and connect them. As you know, the, this type of connection always helps. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the centers. Now, we know that this is a three, that's a three, that's a two, that's a two, and what else do we know? Okay, this is R. We don't know the radius of the circle. We're trying to find it. Now, in this problem, what else do we know? We know that this is a four by 10 rectangles, so these are the lengths, okay? So in order to be able to find R, we're gonna need more information, right, obviously, because we only have the side lengths of a triangle that is not a right triangle. Okay, right triangle is the keyword, there you go. So we're gonna try to make a right triangle here, and the way to make that is we're gonna drop a perpendicular to the base of the rectangle and we're gonna make sure that that passes through the center of the circle, okay? So it's gonna look like this. We're gonna drop a perpendicular and make sure that it passes through the center so that this is also R, okay? Now, look at the rectangle. The height is four, so this height, the height of the right triangle here, I mean, actually two right triangles that are sharing the same height, this is going to be four minus R, okay? All right, so, we're gonna be using the Pythagorean theorem. Let's go ahead and set up our equations. But we don't know this length. This is obviously not where the two circles touch each other. So let's call that x. And then this is going to be five minus x because the whole thing is five, three plus two, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and write down our equations from here. Let's see what we get. So I'm gonna be using these two right triangles to end with the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and write that. I have x squared plus four minus r squared, which is equal to r plus three squared. And then from the second equation, I get five minus x quantity squared plus four minus r quantity squared. Again, four minus r is repeated because they're sharing the same height. And that's gonna equal r plus two quantity squared. Now, what is nice about the system is that uh, even though they're both quadratic, uh, they have the same term, 4 minus r squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate 4 minus r squared from both of the equations and then set them equal to each other. r plus 3 squared minus x squared, which is going to equal from the second one, r plus 2 quantity squared minus 5 minus x quantity squared. Okay, so we have this equality, which is kind of nice, but which what's going to make it even nicer is that we can actually put the r terms together and the x terms together. So that's going to be even nicer. So we can go ahead and bring the x squared over here. Okay. And then go ahead and expand both of these. r squared plus 6r plus 9 minus r squared minus 4r minus 4. I just negated everything inside the parentheses. And this one is going to be x squared minus 25. Now this is supposed to be minus 10x, but it's gonna turn into a plus sign with the negation and plus x squared, that's gonna become negative x squared, okay? So here's my equation. And notice that in this equation, x squared cancels out and r squared cancels out. So we get a nicer expression. We get two r plus five from the left-hand side. And from the right-hand side, we get 10x minus 25 which is kind of nice because I can isolate 2R here, write it as 10X minus 30 and divide both sides by two. And that's gonna give me R equals 5X minus 15, which is good because that's gonna allow me to find one in terms of the other. But I'm not interested in X, right? So you might be thinking, well, should we isolate R or X? And I would say X because uh, we're trying to solve for R. So you don't want to solve for X first and then plug it in. Well, it won't be a big deal, but 
if you want to find the answer directly, so it's at this point, actually, it's a choice that you're making. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and isolate X in this case. So let me go ahead and change this. Forget about this expression and get rid of that and isolate X. So 10 X is going to be 2 R plus 30 and divide both sides by 10 and simplify that. It's going to be R plus 15 divided by 5. Okay. There's many ways to write it, but you can just go with one of them. Okay. Once you have that, you can just plug it into one of the equations here. The first one seems a little simpler, so let's go ahead and use that one. x squared plus 4 minus r quantity squared is equal to r plus 3 squared. Okay? So what I'm going to do is in this equation, I'm going to replace uh, x with r plus 15 divided by 5 and then just solve this expression. And since uh, I can just go ahead and isolate x squared here, I'm going to go ahead and do that first because that's going to simplify the process. Okay, so let's go ahead and expand these two guys here. That's r squared plus 6r plus 9 minus 16 minus 8r plus r squared. Now when you expand it, r squared is going to cancel out, which is nice. That's going to give you the following. Okay, r squared is going to cancel out, which is good. And x squared is going to equal what? 14r minus 7. There you go. Okay, now we know that x is equal to this in terms of r. So now at this point, I can go, just go ahead and replace x with r plus 15 over 5. r plus 15 over 5 is what x equals. And I'm going to square that and set it equal to 14r minus 7. And then once we solve this equation, we should be able to find r, right? Let's go ahead and proceed from here. I'm going to square the top r squared plus 30r plus 225 divided by 25 is equal to 14r minus 7. Okay. Now let's go ahead and cross multiply r squared plus 30r plus 225 is equal to 25 times 14 is the same as 50 times 7, which is 350R, minus 25 times 7 is 175. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and solve for R. Okay? Almost there. You're going to subtract 350 from 30. If you do it the other way around, you get 320. So that's going to be a negative 320R. 225 plus 175 is going to be... 400. Awesome. Okay, so hopefully this equation has real solutions. It better have. And now we're going to solve for r. Okay, but notice that both of the solutions are positive here, right? I can tell from Vieta. So, but only one of them is going to work, right? We're going to find out. Okay, now using the quadratic equation, let's write the two solutions, but let's go ahead and write them separate. The negative b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Oh man, these are giant numbers, right? But we're going to factor it, don't worry. So that's going to simplify the process. So this is one of the solutions, which is the positive one. Let's go ahead and simplify it, and the rest is just going to be pretty much the same thing. Okay, it's with a minus sign here. So I can actually go ahead and put a minus sign. Let's just, no big deal. Okay, plus minus, and then at the end, I'm going to split them. Okay, cool. Now, to simplify this further, it might be helpful to factor out some numbers here. Okay, first of all, notice that this 320 is divisible by 80, right? Uh, it has a factor of 80 in it, and 400 has a factor of 80 in it, right? So we can actually go ahead and think of it this way. Okay, that zoom thing came up again. Okay, so think about it this way, like I have 80 squared, 4 squared, minus 4 times 5 times 80. Okay, now think about what kind of factors they can have. Definitely 80 is a common factor and 4 is a common factor. So 80 times 4 is a common factor here. So what I can do with that is 80 times 4 is 320 in other words. So let's go ahead and pay, take out a 320. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to have a 320 here minus, since I pulled out the 4 times 80, 
I end up with five here. So that's what I have left. Okay, isn't, isn't that cool? You can just quickly calculate this. Okay, 320 minus 5 is going to be 315. Let's go ahead and process that even more. Plus minus. Okay, 320, I need to be able to take this out. So I do need perfect squares. It's divisible by 16, definitely. So it's 16 times 20. 20 is 4 times 5. 16 times 4 is 64. In other words, this is 64 times 5. That would be helpful if I wrote it as 64 times 5. And 315... 315 is actually 3 times 1 of 5, which is 3 times 3 times 35. 35 is not a perfect square, right? But 3 times 3 is, so we can write this as 9 times 35, which is also cool. Uh, minus, um, what am I doing here? Okay, sorry. It's not a minus sign. I'm just going to go ahead and write it as a product times... 9 times 35. Here we go. Okay, that's what it is because I already simplified it. Divided by 2. Okay, now 64 is a perfect square, so that's perfect. You can take it out as an 8. 9 is a perfect square, that becomes a 3. I have the 5 times 35 inside. So 5 times 35 is 5 times 5 times 7, and that's a 25 times 7. So you can also factor out the 25 as a 5, and you're only going to be ending up with 7 inside. Nice. Okay. We, without further ado, we can just write it that way. Now, let's go ahead and multiply 8 and 3 and 5 together. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 times 5 is 120. So my expression becomes, after so much trouble, 120 times root 7 divided by 2. Oh, man. Now, what we can do at this point is we can actually go ahead and divide both sides by 2. And that should give us something nicer. Okay? So, basically, what I've been trying to do here is just trying to solve that equation for R. Right? And we wrote negative B plus minus B squared minus 4AC. And then we kept simplifying that expression until... We got this. Let me go ahead and check my work here. Make sure that everything looks good. 320 minus 5 because this is 1600. That checks out. 320 is 64 times 5. That is correct. And this is 315 and that is 9 times 35. That also checks. Everything looks good. And I pull out the 8. I pull out the 3. And then finally I pull out the 5. And that ends up with 7 inside the radical. Okay? Awesome. I think this looks good. And then from here, we get 120 root 7. Okay. Awesome. Now, what we're going to do next is going to be dividing everything by 2. And this should give us the answer, right? But we still have to decide which one is a good answer. Okay. Which one do you think is going to be the answer in this case? Well, if you think about the positive version, uh, it's going to be a very large number. Think about it. Like it's greater than 160 but we only have like a really tiny rectangle here right which is what 4 by 10 so r is going to be definitely less than 4 right you can see that okay so we're going to be going with the minus sign here so that's going to be our official answer so the radius of this infamous circle is going to be 160 minus 60 times root 7 isn't that awesome so radical okay awesome thank you very much for watching Please comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about the solution. Any alternatives, write it in the comments. See you in the next video. Until then, take care.